Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Ben. I'm also a third year from the University of Portsmouth. I'm an embedded developer, and I run a small uh, consultancy where I do engineering of various tasks. But my real special interest is graphics, and I'd like to give you a little background of where we've come from and where we're going with that today. Um, where's the clicker? So where we've come from, obviously, 1984, Elite. Um, first fully rasterized, fully 3D, fully explorable game. Um, first of its kind and paved the way for many more. And then on the, on the right-hand side there, we have the modern version of Elite um, made by a derivative of the same company. Uh, and it's just night and day, you know. We have, we have over there the... <coughs> the living room of the 70s, 80s, and on the right, the modern living room, I guess. <laughs> um, so starting in the earliest, first and earliest form of graphics, some of you might be old enough to recognize uh, Wolfenstein and Doom uh, in the early 90s. These games used uh, a form of ray casting, whereby they cast a ray into the scene, one per vertical column. When it hit a wall, uh, you could determine how far away from that was from the camera, and that would just be the height of your wall. Um, the further away walls, a uh, smaller column, and the closer walls were a bigger column. That would give you a pretty good illusion of 3D, but it wasn't perfect. Um, then we move on a little bit later to um, Quake Tournament in the top left there, and it uses the same fundamental technology as uh, Elite did. It's a rasterized game. It's takes polygons and turns them into a projection of the polygon. And it is what has widely been considered true 3D. Um, in the bottom right there, we have the 2022 game Stray, which is uh, one of the last really good looking fully rasterized games before the ray tracing uh, fanatic. Um, <clears throat> all modern hardware is designed around this. Um, this uh, mathematics of uh, matrix matrices um, and projecting triangles onto a 3D, 2D screen. More recently, though, um, people have been obsessed with, and myself included, uh, ray tracing. Ray tracing has been around for longer than all of these other techniques, um, but it is a notoriously tricky problem to compute. Uh, not tricky as in tricky, tricky, but tricky as in you have to do lots of things, lots of times, and quite a bit of them to get good results. Um, it works by using the simplest model of light that we have, the real model of light. Uh, it just follows a, a light path through a scene back to a source, and it adds up all of the light. A lot of you will be more familiar with code than a bad little diagram. So very simply, it is just uh, a recursive function that goes through every object in a scene. If it hits the object, it picks up that color, bounces, and goes again um, until it hits the light source, or it hits nothing and is black. <coughs> this very, very, very simple function, just in pseudocode here, is the foundation for all modern photorealistic graphics. Here is my renderer. Um, it looks pretty good. Moving on. <laughs> uh, yeah, 3D graphics has made a pretty big splash. Um, the global video game market revenue in 2023 was an insanely large number, larger than TV, movie, like uh, motion pictures combined. It just completely shocked the world. And outside of video games, um, Pixar is the biggest player. They have done some insane, insane engineering over the years and made some insane strides uh, into realism and quick realism, so like real-time rendering. Uh, after every major motion picture, they release a uh, paper, or multiple usually, about novel techniques they've used, uh, discovered, came up with, and implemented in these movies. This is just the last two motion pictures they've done. So up to Soul on the bottom right there. And that's all papers of novel techniques they've done. Really fascinating stuff. 
Um, <clears throat> Pixar um, worked very closely with a company you may have heard of, Industrial Light of Magic. They did special effects on everything um, <clears throat> from Star Wars in the in the seventies to to uh, most recently the Creator, the weird AI movie. Um, <clears throat> this is the awards that Pixar and ILM have together, basically all of them. Um, <clears throat> And I just like to go through a couple of the techniques that um, Pixar have pioneered. This is global illumination. This is a technique I was talking about earlier in that pseudocode example. Um, this is considering indirect light in your lighting. So basically the bounces. Uh, an object hits the red rock. It will influence the color of the white table it sat on. <coughs> this was first used in Toy Story. Next is uh, the subsurface scattering, which is a, a technique that is still being perfected. Um, hold your hand up to a light, you can see through it. It's not because your hand is translucent, it's because um, light is bouncing around in it. This was used um, very well. Maybe it's been used before, but it was used quite well in, in the modern adaptation of The Incredibles, Incredibles 2, I believe. Um, <coughs> and hair is a notoriously tricky project. Uh, project notoriously difficult problem to get right. There's just so many things that are so extremely difficult to calculate, and Pixar's done them all and perfected it. Um, and, you know, part of RenderMan is being open source, so it's their open source hair model, part of RenderMan, part of Blender, part of Maya, all of these 3D uh, softwares that are used widely in the industry. Um, next is this uh, tessellation subdivision, making less triangles out of more triangles saving computation, you can do it quicker. You can make more scenes, you can do more revisions to your story. You can maybe even do real-time rendering if you have enough power. Um, one of the best papers that they've done, in my opinion, is the paper on Hank from Finding Dory. Uh, this may look like an innocent squid, but it is a very, very complicated, uh, very, very complicated graphical model. Um, more recently, though, as I mentioned, they did all the composites for uh, the creator. Um, the creator was notably filmed. Um, <coughs> creator was notably filmed without any of the annoying masking, like dots or whatever that you might have seen in mo motion capture um, in the past. They literally went up to to um, houses and, and stools and asked if they could film, and then ma made them robots in post because why not? Um, this movie, sorry, this market is another humongous market. The special effects, the visual effects, all of this massive, massive market, uh, almost as big as video games, um, and only predicted to grow. <clears throat> so we use graphics in all walks of life, from um, architecture, helping us design houses, uh, to product design, right, and to preserving history. Uh, and I don't have much time left, but I'd like to quickly touch on a bit of ethics. Uh, this is Grand Moff Tarkin from Star Wars Rogue One. Um, the actor has passed away since the original Star Wars, and he's fully computer-generated in the modern one. He looks pretty good, but again, it's very uncanny. They didn't get it right, and, you know, up to the observer whether it's okay to use that. Uh, next, you know giving your facial scans, your 3D model, to big companies. Again, up to the viewer if they want to do that. So, you know, a quick recap. We have Elite on the left, the docking procedure. Um, and then on the right, the docking procedure for Elite Dangerous, the modern one. Uh, that's all. That's my GitHub. That's my LinkedIn. Um, let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>